What's up everyone, welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. In this case today, we are doing a tool review. This is the Tough Built uh, miter saw stand that's uh, a rolling miter saw stand and you know uh, the 124 inch version of the miter saw stand. There will be a link in the description below but I don't have good things to say about it so I don't recommend that you buy it. If you want to hear what I have to say you're gonna have to stay tuned. Okay, so I know I'm gonna mention this later on in the video, I'll probably say it a dozen times, but this thing is way too narrow of a stand. The tires are way too close together. It provides like a horrible amount of instability. When you have a saw actually mounted to the rails, it is very top heavy to, to, to take it anywhere. So also, at the same time, I was watching Jordan move this up the driveway and we were just going over gravel like you're gonna experience in every job site ever, that you're gonna have gravel and he was struggling to figure out, well, how, how do you carry it by the handle with this the arms hanging out over here? How do you push it? How do you pull it? It really is very, very cumbersome to use just moving it around. We haven't even set it up. Um, we're going to look at it more in depth. Uh, I'll, I'll show you side by side with this and my rolling miter saw stand from Rigid. So uh, before we head down to the shop and look at that, uh, we have paint already coming off of this bad boy. So it shouldn't be a thing that this paint is actually coming off when I've mounted the saw one time. I mounted the saw one time on this and we already have paint chipping off the front. Um, there's paint chipping off of all of these rails. So there's a couple spots around this entire stand that are chintzy and you know the name is Tough Built. Yeah, I don't think it's Tough Built at all, but let's go down to the shop. I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the saw on the stand and just you know what it looks like, but I overall give this thing a thumbs down immediately. Okay, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison between the rigid uh, wheeled stand. Uh, I think it is the uh, MS-UV, which is the miter saw utility vehicle, um, which is a fancy name for it. And this is the tough built stand uh, next to it. So the tough built stand is a lot wider, uh, which doesn't work for my application. I was thinking that it was gonna be about the same uh, length. So width when you're looking at it, not width when, uh, you know, the size of it, we'll talk about that. So uh, it has a lot longer length. I do really enjoy these, these uh, side pods that come out and then you can, uh, you can adjust these risers in between to help you for management of pieces that are longer. That is really nice. Um, the rigid stand has the same exact feature, but it doesn't have the riser in between, which isn't a killer, but that's only feature that I like on the tough belt. So I'm gonna bring you guys in closer and show you just why I absolutely hate this stand. From a price perspective, I think this stand is going for around 279, 299, and that's without the saw, just the stand. And this is going around 235. I'll put the I'll put a picture in picture here so you know exactly what the price is. But this stand almost costs as much as the rolling stand here. So let's go over, let's bring you up close and personal and I'll show you all the things that I hate about this stand. Okay, so I absolutely hate these handles, these locking handles on the front of this thing. Um, they feel cheap. They feel like if you were to use them every day at a job site, they're gonna break in about a month. Um, it allows for nice sliding on here, but to be honest, you never, you never slide a saw on a miter saw stand like this. I, I have never used it in that fashion. Kind of cool that it does that, but th that's not necessary. But these chintzy little knobs here, um, you'll always come around and bang, bang those with your hips when you're working with the saw or trying to manipulate the saw around. Uh, it's got a pretty stable stand, but Things like the wheels, the wheels are, they feel foam filled. They, they're not air filled, they're foam filled. But just sitting in the garage with the saw weight on it has already flat spotted the tires. So 
now I'm rolling it around and it's the thunk, the thunk, the thunk, the thunk, you know, on the flat spotted tires, which shouldn't happen. This, this, this stand is brand new. So it shouldn't flat spot the tires in no time like that. Um, the other thing I really hate about it is if you were looking for mobility on the job site and you needed to get anywhere uh, with any distance, you put these little legs up, which are a little rough to get to, but if you needed to go anywhere on the job site with a little distance in mind over any rocks, the actual stand is so narrow, the tires are so close together that it becomes really top heavy. And this thing, you can't even pull it through the grass um, without this thing tipping over. I pulled it through, through the grass from my trailer to here and it fell over and I had to pick it back up um, and you know uh, put it back on its wheels. It's not really that bad to put up and down, but th those wheels definitely, like, big thumbs down for me. At least make them a little wider. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I really dislike this stand just because of its size. Uh, it, the, the tires are horrible and it just really doesn't, I, I, I don't like these chintzy controls. Um, these, these controls feel chintzy too. If you have something uh, like this, like these little knobs, uh, bring these knobs up and close personal. Uh, but these knobs are basically just a, a bolt that is glued into a knob. If you, if like the, the rigid stand, they're actual, um, they actually have metal components inside of the knob. So the knob goes around the component of the bolt. So this is just basically a bolt that's glued onto a plastic handle. So these are inevitably going to fail um, just a matter of time. If you have multiple guys on the job site beating this up, it's not gonna last long. Uh, it's kind of cool that it has a power strip on the end of it, GFCI protected. Uh, I will tell you that every single GFCI um, Every single GFCI module that I've ever had eventually fails and you have to cut it off and hardwire it. So um, I would expect nothing less from that thing. It's a cheap, it's a cheap module on there. It's not, why do you need a GFCI? It's probably something to do with regulations and getting it UL listed that they need that on there. But you know, kind of cool that it has three outlets on it. You can use the saw, you can have a miter saw sitting next to it or a, uh, a table saw sitting next to it. But I just wish it had better controls that, that weren't so chintzy um, and a nice wide stance so it didn't tip over easily and get these darn things out of the way. Re redesign this, redesign this because these are, you know, you get somebody torquing on that more than, more than it needs to, which will inevitably happen, you're gonna break them. So that's my two cents on that. I really don't like the stand. Will I return it? No, I'm not going to take the effort of, of, uh, of taking it back apart and shipping it back. I bought this one off Amazon, but I'm certainly not going to use it on the day to day. The rigid has held up for two years. I don't see this holding up for that amount of time. Uh, but yeah, that's my two cents. All right, guys, so I hope that you got a good understanding of what I'm talking about with some of these chintzy parts, some of these plastic clips. If you're a homeowner, if you're a DIYer, and this thing's gonna stay set up in your garage or in your shop, I'll give it a, it's okay. I'll give it an okay. I would definitely go out and get the DeWalt stand or the uh, Milwaukee stand that folds out. Um, forget the wheels on this thing. Forget the fancy features. I would probably buy a Master Force one before I buy this one. Um, the Master Force one is cheaper and it is a lot nicer than this. So as far as tough built goes, this thing gets two thumbs down, like I said before. Uh, I, I hope that you guys uh, got my, the gist of my video. If you were just setting this up and you weren't moving it, it's an okay stand. But if you were trying to have this on the job site whatsoever, then there's no way I would recommend this for a professional. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you guys are into, and we'll see you guys in the next video.